to stop the progression of existing disease and recurrence of new disease lifestyle changes will still be advocated then there's a euro score which is used to calculate the risk now as soon as on that calculator you add up the other adverse factors it will give you it will populate what are the factors like if somebody has come with a big heart attack it will give it will increase the risk hello and warm welcome to medsenas podcast series where we bring you insightful conversation with leading experts in medical field hi i'm your host dr smarika bhat and today i'm honored to have a conversation with esteemed doctor dr vaibhav mishra with us he is the senior director and the head of cardiac surgery at max super specialty hospital in delhi dr mishra brings extensive global experience from india australia and new zealand He also specializes in beating heart total arterial bypass and minimally invasive cardiac surgery. Welcome Dr. Mishra to the podcast. We are excited to have you here. Thank you so much for the lovely introduction. Uh without further ado, let's jump right in with our first question. We'll That's start it. with the basics. What exactly is coronary artery bypass graft and when would you recommend it to the patient? Sure. So you know uh, bypass surgery is a very confusing term for many but it's very easy to understand bypass basically means that we are bypassing the obstruction and with which also means that we are not doing anything to the existing blockages all right so that is the important thing to understand and that is why we are uh, bypassing it this is in contrast to stent which actually expands in the place where there's a blockage so it takes care of the blockage it expands that area whereas in bypass we use an alternative channel from the arteries inside the chest or the veins in leg or arteries in the hand to create an alternative channel to provide the extra blood supply without doing anything to the original blockage so bypassing the blockage it is very simple to understand just like you see you know there are bypasses around the cities which bypass the traffic so the traffic goes around the city and not entering the city is the same thing a uh, very well put together answer so we'll move on to the next question is as you are the pioneer minimal of minimalistic invasive techniques so how uh, have these approaches changed recovery of the patients all right so minimal invasive uh, uh, cabg or any kind of cardiac surgery is the term applied when we don't go in by a center incision so you know in a conventional standard cardiac surgery to access the heart we cut through the breastbone or the sternum and that gives us access to the heart now when we utilize a different access basically going through left or right side of chest in between the ribs and then accessing the heart those are called as minimal access or minimal invasive surgeries not just because of the size of the cut but avoiding the cutting of sternum or the breastbone now the advantage is easy to understand if we are not cutting through the bone uh during the operation if we cut through the bone most of the blood loss happens from the cut end of the bone so if we are not cutting through the bone blood loss is minimal hence the blood transfusion requirement is less pain is less recovery is earlier because if this sternum and the associated shoulders are intact the patients can go on to have a fully functional life very early on like uh, precautions advised for traditional bypass surgery sleeping on the sides lifting weights don't apply for this so the advantages are multifold it starts from less blood transfusion all right less wound infection also the infection basically originates from the bone uh, less wound infection less pain less analgesia early mobility early discharge early functional recovery uh, so these are the multifactorial advantages essentially uh, this technique is that is why advocated for younger people so that they can uh, utilize the benefits being imparted by a small cut that was a really vivid description so our audience is interested in results so speaking of results what can patient expect long term do uh, outcomes vary uh, based on demographic all right so um, i mean as i said you know the gold standard is going through the sternum or the base bone that is the gold standard that can be done everywhere all parts of the world everybody irrespective of his age uh it's sex heart function so many things uh minimal invasive surgery on the other hand uh 
is a unique niche kind of surgery which it has to be chosen so it is not universally applicable it cannot be done in so many situations so you have to select the patient so patient selection is a most important cornerstone of performing a minimal invasive surgery for example if i tell you if the patient has suffered a heart attack and we need to perform surgery it cannot be minimal access surgery because the access to heart will be very limited similarly if the lung function is poor we cannot do it because uh, for such patients uh, they require a special technique called a single lung ventilation where one lung works during the surgery other doesn't this is especially for bypass surgery in those cases it cannot be done similarly if we talk about bypass surgery if the vessels are diffusely diseased calcified if this you know if they are diseased throughout the length in all these patients if the patient is very big bulky obese then obviously going through here will uh, will give us less vision so in all these situations uh, a traditional bypass or a standard surgery is preferred so uh, outcomes will basically depend on how well you have chosen the patient if you've chosen the patient well and you've chosen a deserving patient then the outcomes will be very good as comparable to a normal uh, surgery or even better uh, but as i said you know the uh, the entire crux of this is choosing the right patient as i said minimal access is not a universally applicable technique it is a technique for very select few patients for deserving patients for which it can be done so i often uh, some most of the patients ask for minimal access surgery and if they're not suitable i give them an example of a luxury car you know a luxury car also needs good roads to be driven on it cannot be driven on a gravel road but if there's a gravel road what works best is you know a truck tractor or a 4x4 which is our standard surgery so yes in a deserving patient the outcomes of minimal access surgery are gratifying there is also term called lifestyle which often a uh, patient wants to know that is surgery inevitable for patients with coronary uh, artery disease or lifestyle changes can make a difference in it all right so lifestyle changes definitely take a lot of part in as a, fa- a factor of causation for coronary artery disease but you have to understand these lifestyle changes have to be done before you develop the disease okay <clears throat> so the lifestyle changes either in the form of diet or exercise have to be done for a lot of lot many years before they can give some benefit but before the disease has occurred all right once you have clinically proven coronary blockages causing symptoms you will need some form of treatment along with lifestyle changes the lifestyle changes will always be there all right they have to be done but you will need some other form of treatment either stents or bypass surgery or medical management along with lifestyle changes lifestyle changes alone will not mitigate these blockages so we in these patients also we advocate lifestyle changes and why it is because the new grafts which we have given to the patient they don't get blocked or the new stent which has been placed it doesn't get blocked also it is quite possible that they have some number of normal arteries they do not develop blockages so to stop the progression of existing disease and recurrence of new disease lifestyle changes will still be advocated but if somebody asks me this that by doing lifestyle changes can you uh, reduce the percentage of existing lesions or or the symptoms or severity then no it's not possible good so dr weber let's shift the gears towards bypass surgery so every procedure carries risk so what complication should patient be aware of when considering uh, bypass surgery these days uh, complications are extremely rare uh, you know technological advances have made it possible for us to do a very safe surgery even simple things like blood transfusion requirements have gone down because of the latest available techniques and all that but yes complications are inevitable in a certain small percentage of patients they can happen and most of these complications they happen in patients who are already predisposed all right so for example if somebody 
has been a smoker and has got poor lungs then they can expect to have you know certain kind of pulmonary complications like pneumonia uh, requirement of more oxygen if somebody has compromised kidneys in form of diabetic nephropathy then they can think of having you know a, a renal problem in post op period similarly if somebody has had past history of stroke or other problems then they can develop neurological complications or not so there are few uh, problems inherent to the procedure for example the risk of bleeding is always there in the initial few hours of surgery but we take care of everything you know we give platelet plasma and all the products to take care of bleeding after bleeding you know once the bleeding problem is settled then the patients can have these problems but basically they happen to somebody who is predisposed as i said whether it's a neurological problem or a renal problem or a pulmonary problem these three systems are commonly affected after surgery especially if you are predisposed to it there's a minor chance of wound infection that too which ha- will happen if somebody is having uncontrolled diabetes but overall if i tell you for a routine bypass surgery in somebody who's well preserved heart function is good the complications are less than 1% you know of the order of 0.5% mm-hmm. then there's a euro score which is used to calculate the risk now as soon as on that calculator you add up the other adverse factors it will give you it will populate what are the factors like if somebody has come with a big heart attack it will give it will increase the risk if somebody is heart function is already poor it will increase the risk so overall the risk then uh, goes up but still pretty safe but if for example if somebody is absolutely fine nothing then the risk will be less than 0.5% So, as you touch upon that calculator, can you tell us little bit parameters of those calculator? What can this? So, it's a it's a international calculator called as Euroscore, European Society Score. It was developed long time back by pooling the data of millions of cardiac patients who had bypass surgery. So, it basically starts with age. Uh, I'm telling you everything from uh, you know uh, top of my head, so I may miss certain okay. points. But the first factor is age. so once you enter increasing age the risk will increase okay then comes sex so obviously in females the coronary artery disease is also aggressive and the the risk factor is a bit more all right so age uh sex and after that is comes the uh <clears throat> things like mobility if somebody is mobile or somebody is immobile you know and they're Uh, activity is limited then there's diabetes diabetes is also many grades then requiring insulin if you're requiring insulin your risk will be more pulmonary uh, function if you're requiring home oxygen or something then it is more heart function that is the most important which will give you um, more risk uh, it is divided into various categories so mild moderate or severe dysfunction so if your heart function is less than 30% your risk will go up significantly similarly uh there is something else called as uh, critical preoperative state which means that uh what are your parameters before the surgery so if you are already on medications to increase your blood pressure or you have complex arrhythmia or you had a, a cpr or a massage or you are already on ventilator then your risk will go up highly okay that's critical preoperative state will straight away increase your risk by 10% then also the presentation if you are having chest pain on and off or regularly or at rest according to the canadian society then whether you have suffered a heart attack or not if you have suffered a heart attack within 90 days of the operation being performed then your risk will go up and so similar few other points and then finally it goes to uh what is the level of urgency so and they have defined the level of urgency so one is urgent which means that it can be it has to be done in the same admission when the patient has come has a angiogram has it has to be done in same admission next possible uh, list then it is urgent this salvage when it has something goes wrong in cath lab and needs to be done urgently or before the list that's emergency before the next day it's emergency and then similarly early is within 7 days elective is within 13 days so based on when you are uh, undergoing the surgery will also your risk go and then whether it is a plain bypass or some associated surgery valve surgery along with it based on that also your risk will go so overall these points they then populate into a score which tells you 
the risk of having complications from the surgery before during and after the surgery which is the periop period up till 28 days so that's a euro score calculator and it will give you a risk percentage so as i said normally it's 0.5% but if you add up those points it may give you 5% 10% 15 20 25 which is very high sometimes when we operate patients in emergency when there's no other option the risk is up to 50% which is very high and then the patient is obviously explained about it okay. anything more than 50% is called as you know technically prohibitive risk we don't embark on such operations okay thank you so much dr mishra for say, uh, sharing such wonderful insights with us i'm sure our audience will enjoy it truly thank you so much uh, for inviting me on your talk it was lovely being here and i'm sure with all this you know we have uh, we have been able to impart knowledge and educate people and i specifically want to uh, give this message to everybody that these days there's nothing to be scared about surgery if you have been advised surgery do not delay it seek treatment also do not ignore your symptoms often indian mindset people ignore their symptoms they attribute chest pain to acidity or so many things wasting crucial time so if you ever feel any kind of cardiac symptoms do not delay uh seeking medical advice and also you've been if you've been advised surgery there's no need to be scared surgeries are perfectly safe these days with this advice i'd like to thank medsign apps and all the uh, people watching once again for this opportunity thank you thank so you much. so much thank you so much dr vivek for such kind words and thank you to our viewers for tuning in and remember if you are a healthcare professional who is eager to delve deeper into medical topics or have questions do not hesitate us to join on medsinas platform medsinas platform is not just a resource it's a dynamic space where you can connect with your medical peers participate in meaningful discussions and contribute to the ongoing evolution of healthcare so until next time stay tuned take care Thank you.